everyone, it's Mark Starr from thehoppery.com. Today I've got a pretty special session lined up for you, uh, and that's because I'm actually going to be sampling three beers today. Um, as you can see right here, I'll be taking a look at three variations uh, of the Mad Hatter IPA, uh, which comes from New Holland Brewing Company, uh, which is out of Holland, Michigan. Um, I was actually in one of my local liquor stores here the other day, uh, and I saw uh, you know three of these different bottles. Uh, over here to your left you have the Farmhouse Hatter, uh, which is kind of their play on a Belgian IPA of the Mad Hatter. In the middle you have the Black Hatter, which obviously is a black IPA. Uh, and then finally right here to your far right uh, we have the Rye Hatter, uh, which is a Rye PA. Um, and I was looking at these bottles, funny enough, and I was thinking to myself, like, God, which one of these would I like to try first? Uh, and then I thought about, well, you know, I could probably get one of these on the show. And as I was kind of looking at the labels, which, by the way, are just amazingly done, uh, it's actually done by a Chicago artist named Kyle Bice. And uh, I'll put his uh, website on here as well so that you guys can go look at his um, artwork. But... Regardless, I was looking at these bottles, trying to think of which one I wanted to get on the show, uh, which one I wanted to buy, uh, and I kind of thought, well, you know what, they're $4.99 a piece, which is, you know, for a 22-ounce bottle, that's pretty reasonable. Um, so I just said, why not get them all? We'll bust them open on the show, you know, kind of take a look at each one of them, and uh, I'll kind of tell you which one I like the most, least, you know, we'll kind of rate them from best to worst. So. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get do, get doing that? Um, I've actually and I've got my hat on today for a reason. It's Mad Hatter Day here. Um, let me clarify too, as I'm opening these, that uh, New Holland has an anniversary party every year where they do you know variations of some of their beers. Um, as you know, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of their flagship beers is called the Mad Hatter IPA. They also have an Imperial Hatter. Uh, which is, you know, obviously an imperial version of that. One bottle that was released recently, too, in this line uh, that I did not see and I did not buy uh, was a oak-aged version, and that's fine anyway. I, I'm typically not a fan of oak-aged IPAs. There's something about the barrel aging for me that just really kind of, um, I, I guess, contradicts the hop flavor and the brightness and you know those citrus characters that you're really looking for in an IPA so I'm really happy with these three I think these are three styles that are pretty common in the marketplace these days um, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at them and uh, I, I think maybe we should probably just go ahead and pour these one at a time uh, the first one let's look at here is the farmhouse hatter and just let me tell you the reason why I chose to drink them in this order is simply uh, by ABV. Uh, this first one here is 5% ABV. The second one, the Black Hatter, is 5.5% ABV. And then finally, the Rye Hatter clocks in at 6.5. So it's the biggest of the three. Um, so we'll go ahead and drink that one last. So let's go ahead and dig in here. I'm going to go ahead and pour the Farmhouse Hatter, which, you know, obviously based on the name, um, is a farmhouse ale mixed with a IPA. So it's going to really have that Belgian style IPA uh, character that you know we're starting to see a lot more of. Uh, the color on it is just this really beautiful warm orange sunshine color and it's very very clear maybe just a very faint amount of uh, haze on there but not a whole lot. It's got that traditional uh, off-white to light tan colored head, uh, really looks kind of fizzy, uh, soapy if you will, but um, yeah, pretty traditional looking uh, beer for you know this style. So anyway, let's go ahead and dig in there and smell it. Well, I'm definitely getting that Belgium aroma, you know, right out of the right out of the gate. Really nice, kind of soft, perfumey. Um, you know, cotton candy sort of aroma as well. Maybe a light bubble gum kind of aroma. Yeah, it smells really just like it should. In fact, it smells a lot like the uh, Boulevard Collaboration Number 2 that Tim and I reviewed uh, not too long ago. So, well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and taste this one and uh, see where it stands. Hmm. 
So I'm definitely getting a little bit of that Belgian character on there. There's a nuttiness with this one though that I wasn't expecting. I do like the bitterness in here. There's a really good drying, bittering character in there. You know, really matching with that yeast. Um, you know, really kind of dries out your tongue. Uh, there's a good amount of hop in here. Um, you know, really, I think this reminds me a, a hell of a lot of the collaboration number two that Boulevard did. I think that one was a little bit more bright, um, a little bit more clean. Um, you know, this is, I, I guess, a little bit more bitter, um, maybe a little bit nuttier on the palate, which is, you know, for something that um, you know, you're really expecting to get the banana bread, clove, and bubblegum sort of uh, flavor out. It's kind of masked by some of that nuttiness. Now, it's still a really good beer. Um, but yeah, just a little bit odd that it's um, as nutty as it is. So, well anyway, let's go ahead and set this one aside for now. And uh, let's go ahead and pour the Black Hatter and uh, see what we get with this one. Alrighty. And before we take a sip, I'm going to go ahead and just take a little drink of water. Try to wash out some of that uh, flavor from the Belgian yeast. Black Hatter. Alright, Black IPA. Well, you know, it's definitely black. As I hold it up to the light here, though, I can really see some uh, ruby red colors coming through on the edges and right down near the middle. Um, head color a little bit darker obviously than the last one. Uh, got this really light hazelnut color on it. About the same exact consistency in terms of bubble size. Um, but you know really looks pretty spot on for a black IPA. In fact this one might be just a touch lighter than what I'm used to seeing. Uh, you know you take something like uh, Hop in the Dark from Deschutes uh, or Sublimely Self-Righteous from Stone. Those really kind of try to be black, black IPAs, uh, but this one's really more of like a, you know, a very, very dark ruby, red, brown, just approaching black color. But um, let's go ahead and smell it. Okay, I'm definitely getting some of the, um, you know, the hop characters that we, you would find, uh, you know, in something like... Uh, you know, like a, almost like a caramelized onion. He's got that really dank. There's like a grapefruit aroma in there, you know, dank grapefruit, caramelized onions, cabbage. Uh, you know, I know you guys have smelled this before in an IPA. You know, I am getting just a very faint amount of coffee bitterness from those darker malts. There's a light perfume as well, so I'm imagining excuse me, that they've probably uh, put several different types of hops. Let's see if they say, yeah, it's dry hopped with um, Centennial hops. Uh, so that's definitely going to give it that aroma. All right, well, let's go ahead and taste it. I'm definitely tasting those Centennial hops in there. You know, it's got this really nice bitterness from the hops like a light, dank, floral grassiness uh, on the flavor, um, really getting the richness from those darker malts. Um, not quite as biting at, you know, in the bitterness as the farmhouse was. I would say that the, this is probably a little bit more balanced than that one. Um, you know, really liking the way they've paired this with the uh, dark malts though. Really a good beer. All right. Well, that's the second one. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the rye hatter. So, you know, rye beers clearly uh, are brewed with rye malts. They tend to have a little bit more of a spicy character. Um, you know, so it's going to, you know, probably give this one a little bit more of a bite. And uh, let me go ahead and take a drink here. Boy, that last one had a lot of flavor. But the color on this one is uh, maybe fairly similar to the first one we looked at, a little bit darker though. Um, you know, this is more of a dark, kind of a soft burnt orange color. There is a little bit more haze on this one, uh, so probably a little bit more hop character going in this one as well. 
Uh, same thing with the head, you know, we're kind of moving back to that lighter uh, white colored head. Maybe not as tight knit on the, bottle, on the bubbles, excuse me, in carbonation as we uh, saw on the farmhouse. Um, but still just a very, you know, traditional uh, looking IPA. Um, but let's go ahead and smell this one and see where we go. Wow, okay, so I'm really getting the bubblegum aroma out of this one. And this one smells more uh, Belgian than the farmhouse even did. This one almost smells like a triple. Uh, or even kind of a really light uh, quad, you know, with those kind of dark fruits. Um, I won't say that I'm getting a dark fruit aroma because of, you know, the color on it, uh, but de definitely sticky fruits like apricots, um, maybe even some figs and dates. Loads of bubble gum, just a little bit of spice, and that spice is really coming through uh, from the rye that they use in this. And you know, it really almost smells like it's been aged in a little bit of oak, you know, because I'm getting that, you know, spicy character, which I know is coming from the rye, but it's almost like a uh, spicy perfume-like character. But yeah, I, I think I really like the way this one smells the most out of the three so far, but uh, let's see if it tastes better. Yeah, it's definitely got a spiciness, um, you know, really tastes like it's been aged in some sort of oak barrel. Really good amount of bitterness up front, you know, which is really the first thing that hits your palate. As it kind of goes down, it really dries out your mouth um, and it really leaves this nice floral spicy character behind. really getting that Belgian character out of here though and that's what's so interesting to me is that um, you know you really would think that the farmhouse hatter would you know overpower you uh, kind of with this flavor but it didn't in fact let me go back and try this one next to it okay yeah so after having that one I changed my mind that definitely has a lot more of that Belgian yeast in it um, that has more of the phenolic character, so you know, like the Band-Aid sort of, you know, medicinal flavor to it. That's really got that one. This one doesn't have that. This is more of the Belgian style, like I said, of like a triple, um, where it almost takes on like a little bit of more chewiness. Uh, but I really like the spice in this one. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. You know, I like the take on all three of these. I like how different they are. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try this. I'm going to pour a little bit more of each of these and kind of just rip through them pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to pour a little bit more in here though just to kind of get some fresh head on there and a, a nice new pour. And kind of go back through them one at a time and uh, really I guess I'll tell you which one of these I like the most. In fact. Um, from what I've gathered so far, I like them all for different reasons, and that's good, but that's, you know, that's kind of the fun, I think, of doing this experiment is to just kind of see one after the other, and you can see as I set these up there, you know, the color. This one's obviously the lightest, and then you go to the darkest with the black IPA, and then right in the middle um, is the, uh, the rye. So let's go ahead and go through these one last time. Yeah, very phenolic, very spicy uh, with the hops, really nice caramel. Uh, you get into the black IPA, definitely getting that darker coffee, roasty character um, with more of a bittering hop. Not a whole lot of um, high-end aroma hops on this one, though I really can uh, taste those centennial hops. And then finally with the rye hatter, you know, you're definitely getting that, you know, warm, you know, toasted caramel uh, spiciness from the, uh, from the rye that they use in there. But yeah, three, uh, three very good beers. Uh, if I had to rate them, I would say probably, 
I would have to look at them by style. And I'm actually going to have to go in order, I think. Um, I really found that the farmhouse ale, uh, the farmhouse hatter, you know, really represented uh, that Belgian IPA style the best. Not the best that I've had in the style, but, you know, I really, really like it. I think it's, you know, pretty much spot on for the style. Um, so I'm going to have to give that one my highest mark. Um, the second one here, I probably like second best, which is the black IPA. I'm really, you know, my palate right now really enjoys that coffee bitterness with, you know, that really nice hopping uh, that they've given this one with the Centennial hops. Uh, but yeah, overall, you know, again, not, not the best in the style that I've had, uh, but I do really, really appreciate what they've done with that one. And uh, for that style, it's a good representation. And then finally, I'm going to go with this one, uh, which is the Rye Hatter. You know, I love the spiciness of it. Um, but it just, I, I think it doesn't really stand out as much. Um, it's definitely something that I could drink, you know, very easily and quite regularly for $4.99 a bottle. Um, hell, I think for $4.99, any one of these would be a really good purchase. Um, but I think that's really it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, I hope that you, you know, may, if you like me doing these, let me know. I'll try to do some other beers, some other styles, breweries, whatever. Um, as long as it's within reason, don't tell me you want me to do like a vertical of Dark Lord because it's not going to happen. So, uh, But anyway, that's all I've got for you today, guys. And uh, my name is Mark Starr. Until we get together next time, cheers, guys. when you mix all of them together. Let's see. It's actually really good. <laughs>